Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all the time. Worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God. El Elyon El Che. He is the Living God. His love is to us, through us, for us, and not against us. He wants to lift us up into Himself. And we are to give Him praise and to give Him glory because of who He is. Because as He's lifting us higher and higher, lifting us to His face, we see Him for who He is. And we understand that the whole world was created for Him. We were made for him and we were made in his image made to be like him and even as sin has come into the world and we were <clears throat> we were born into it we have a savior one that we are uh, can say yes to who we are born after and now we have a new life a new mind we have a, a right way of thinking, a right way of living, a right way of doing things, and it's all in the knowledge of who He is. If we would just find ourselves wrapped up in Him. But, uh, as this world is going in the direction that it's going in, we find ourselves somewhat swept away by the things we see and the things that we hear. We begin to tremble and quake and feel like, where is our help? And I'm telling you, our help is in the one who created the world and all that there is in it. And we read our Bible from Genesis to Revelations. And we find out the beginning and we find out the end. The end of this world system anyway. And we can trust the eternal God who lives forever. He will not throw us away. We don't just die. We have been risen with Christ. We have been risen with Christ. When he died, we rose with him. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ. Believe me. We are spiritual beings in a physical body. And that spirit is alive and it is well. And it's a, it's a number 10 seated in the heavenly places. The soul is what has to be renewed. The soul of ours is mind, will, and emotions of ours is what needs to come to the Word. Sit down and drink up the wisdom and the knowledge of God. We're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our not mind. We're supposed to get up and put on Christ. And every step we take, we're putting on Christ. We're remembering Him and saying, what would Jesus do in this situation? Well, you know, we've been given the Holy Spirit so that no matter what we're, we're walking through, He's reminding us of the truth. The Lord has given us himself that we would not fall into sin. That we would not fall into, into doubt and into fear and into anxiety. The Bible talks about trusting him. Always talking about trusting the Lord and what happens when you trust the Lord. When we trust him, we are renewed in strength. And we... When we trust Him, we are we walk in the authority and the life that we have in Him. We're not consumed by the God of this world. We're not consumed by the trouble. We're not consumed by the situation and the circumstances of this life. We learn how to just take this care that we have and we put it in His hand. That means forcefully, forcefully taking this care and putting it in the hands of of the Lord and reminding yourself you know David he, what does it say he did now he strengthened himself in the Lord you, you know what it means to strengthen yourself in, in the Lord is to remember him and his faithfulness his faithfulness to take care of the situation uh, and to like that song that even if we don't see it, he's working it out together for our good. Even though I don't see it, he's working. Even though I don't feel it, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. The Lord, he's not going to relent. He's not going to forget about you. But we need to press 
and calm down. Because he did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us his spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. He will create in us. He has already done it, by the way. He puts in us a new heart. He gives us a right understanding. He teaches us the fear of the Lord, the awe of Him. He teaches us the awe of Him, the wonder of Him, the goodness of Him, the greatness of Him. He teaches us that our expectation should always be of Him because He never stops and He never fails. He doesn't give up on us. It's us who give up. It's us who walk away for the fear that of, of the things that are happening in our life, the fear of the things that are happening in the world. And see, if we don't keep our eyes on Christ, when remember Peter in the boat, and he's in the boat, they see Jesus walking on the water, and he says, Lord, bid me to come on the water. Bid me to come to you on the water. Yeah. And, and, and Jesus says, come. Now, for a few minutes, Peter walked on the water. And as soon as he heard the wind and the waves, he saw them. He panicked. He let, he turned his, he, he didn't just panic, he turned his face away from him and began to stare at the storm. I don't see what staring at the storm is going to do when Jesus was doing something that no one else could do. He was walking on the water. He was defying he defied gravity that day he defied the liquid under his feet and he walked on the water he says to, to Peter when Peter's screaming out Lord help me I'm you know I'm going to drown you know I don't know if you got all those words out but help me Jesus reaches out his hand and says why did you doubt but look, this is a life-threatening situation. This situation has taken years in your life. This situation has taken a moment in your life. This situation in the world is built up, pent up, and building and building and building. But you've got to remember that what's going on in the world was sown by the seed of wickedness, sown by the seed of evil thoughts and evil desires. And they're getting what they desire. This is what they want. It's been sown. That's the seed that was sown. But the seed that we sow in our hearts and in our mouth, the seed that we have allowed the Father by the Holy Spirit to write in our minds, to put it here in our mind, in our thoughts, that word that he put in our heart, this is a seed of God. And we are not to doubt the words that come from his mouth. What did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God our Father. We cleave to his words. We've got to fight this good fight. If we're, if we're really going to fight a good fight of faith and see the Lord when he comes. And he's not just coming for a rescue mission. See, Jesus already defeated the enemy and already got the victory for us. And we are more than conquerors if we abide in him. If we deny ourselves these feelings and these emotions and these thoughts, and we lay them down before the Lord and get his, his wisdom on it, get his spin on this situation and that situation and say what he's saying and do the good that he called us into this life to do, and we will see the glory of God. But if we learn how to take these, this, this mess in our minds, you see, the storm is real. The situation is real. I don't like this. It's real. What's going on in the world, it's real. But when we, <clears throat> our destination is not the earth. Our destination is to be with the eternal God forever. <clears throat> See, we're passing through this world. This is not our home. The 
the ever-living God, the everlasting God, the eternal God, the one who has no beginning and no ending. Everything that has breath in it will face him. Jesus won the fight. The devil gets no rewards. He doesn't even get to take prisoners. Do you understand that? He gets cases cast into the lake of fire, and everyone who followed him, they go with him too. They go with him too. Everything that does not side on the side of the living God, the one who created the world and all there is in it and has all power in his hand, no one else gets to make the decisions around here. It is Christ. It is the Father. It's the Father. He knows what he's doing. He, he, this is his world. I know evil's in the world, and the prince of the power, prince uh, uh, of the power of the air. He's he's controlling the atmosphere, and, and people are like puppets listening to him and dancing to his song. But the end is already written. Jesus won. He defeated all the, the principalities and powers. He, he, he trampled them. Whatever was wicked, whatever was evil, whatever was coming against the knowledge of God, it was trampled. It was put underfoot. And, and, it, and the book of Revelations talks about, you know, the, the, the footstool being stuffed for Jesus. And that footstool is his enemies. All that came against the knowledge of God has already been, it's already been done and it's finished. It's not a fleshly fight. It's not a carnal fight. It's a spiritual fight that's already been finished. The, the, the spirits of this world are trying to mastermind mankind and take what the Lord had wanted for his beauty, wanted for his glory, wanted to perfect and make beautiful to himself. All he wants to do is, the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy it. But he's not taking prisoners, you see. It's just a bunch of people, a bunch of things that want, that don't want God. They don't want him. They've said Raka. You stupid people, they don't want him. The Lord, our, our, our Father, our, our, our Savior, the one who is spirit, the one who is life, the one who says, here I am. I want to perfect in you what concerns you. I want to perfect you. I want to make you whole, entire, and lacking nothing. It wasn't just for living in this life, by the way. This is the God who really loves you and cares for you and wants to wants the best for you. Wants the best for your household. But we have to let go of the way that we're feeling right now. The kingdom of God is suffering violence, but the violent take the kingdom of God by force. How do you take the kingdom of God by force? But by force, by strengthening ourselves in the Lord like David did. And if we're going to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. We're gonna to look to him where our we're going to, like he said, or whomever wrote it in Psalms, I look to the hills to where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. I look to the hills. I, I look I look out there to to him who is my life, and my peace, and my joy. I don't want to lean on my own understanding about this, Father God. You know exactly where I am and what I need and what's grieving me right now. You know the condition of the world and the the, the blinder is it, it, trying to blind me, but I don't. I, you've given me life and peace. You've given me a sound mind, not a spirit of fear, not a spirit of, of lust, not a spirit of, of of greed, not a spirit of fear. Did I say that already? But you gave me a sound mind. You gave me righteousness. You gave me peace, and you gave me joy in the Holy Spirit. 
I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. See, we got to start talking a language that the flesh can't talk. Something that we've been taught by the Holy Spirit because we've taken time with him. We See, this is a relationship with the living God, the one who is to be feared. In fact, he, as I said it before and I'll say it again, he teaches us the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He teaches us how to look to him, the one who created all things. The one who's always been and has no ending and, and no beginning. Who forever will be. Who forever will be. I just want to get our, our minds out of our situation, our personal situation that is in our house, our personal situation that is in our body, our personal situation that is in about uh, that is about our children, our personal situation that's about our spouse, our, our personal situation that is uh, that is about our finances, whatever that personal thing is that is affecting your your spiritual life and causing you to live in a temporal state. I want us to, to, to really sit down and understand God is right here with us. He's given us a, a, His salvation through Jesus Christ, His Son. He's given us His Spirit who teaches us all things. It's back the Holy Spirit, the gift of God, the one who gets us in. He, he see, see, many are called and few are chosen because they don't always listen to the Holy Spirit. They won't follow him. They won't deny themselves like Jesus said, pick up your cross, your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, and follow the Lord. Follow him. But many are called and few are chosen because they won't do it. The Lord didn't pass to us a spirit of fear of this situation or that situation or the fear of what's going on in the world. We're supposed to take all of these cares and put it right in his lap, forcefully taking hold of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is God's will. It's, his, it's the righteousness that, is, that he's right. He's got power and strength and authority, and he's given it to us. He's given us wisdom and knowledge of himself. What does it say in Proverbs chapter 9 again? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. He's taking us into himself. He's, we're having a relationship, an intimacy with the Lord of heaven and earth. Where he's knowing everything about your heart, everything about your condition, everything about the situation, everything about what you fear, and everything that you don't like, and everything that you do like. Anything that you're, you, any way that you are about everything. He already knows it, already knew it. And wants to perfect the thing that concerns you. He wants to give you life and life more abundantly. He wants to pour it in because you are his children. We are his children. We are his possession. In fact, we're a prized possession to him. He loves us. He loves us. He, we don't understand the magnitude of the love that he has for us. But if we would come and sit down before him and insist that this situation is something that he can repair, he can restore. He can open the doors and he can shut the doors in my life. He can heal me. He can strengthen me. He can shield me. May I share that shield again? It's all his word. It's his word. It's the knowledge of who he is. And we cannot, you can't, you can't lapse on this. You can't, like, shrink back on this. You have to forcefully advance the kingdom. Forcefully taking what is yours, believing God is, and that he's working all things out together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. You have to believe this and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm the apple of his eye. The Lord works every again, I already said it, He works everything out together for the good. All that call on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Lord honors His word above His name. Keep on saying what He has said. He's given us 
his will and testament it's right here in the bible and we need to get this word in our face so that we're ready on the day that jesus christ calls us by name we will hear him we will meet him in the sky we will meet him in the air i'm telling you but prepare your heart we have to come out of this world and out of our situation and come into the presence of god see i want i i want this relationship where I hear his voice and I know his name, knowing his name. You know, we know each other on the face of this planet. We know our husband. We know our wife. We know our children. We know them, you know? that's But we can know God this way, but even deeper and deeper, even better, because he won't cast you out. He won't throw you away. He's not going to get mad at you and not talk to you. He's not going to cut off the phone on you. He's not going to, what is it they do on, on these apps? They, they block you. He's not going to do none of that. But he who is the counselor, he who is the prince of peace, he's going to work in you. He's going to work in you. He's going to, he's going to help you learn how to take the deeds of your flesh, the works of your flesh, the works of your mind, will, and emotions, your feelings, your thoughts. He's going to teach you how to submit your thoughts to God. Like it says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. You know, come, come. <laughs> he's saying, come, seek me while it's early. Seek me while, you, while I may be found. Let the wicked forsake their, their thoughts and the unrighteous, you know, their ways. Come on to me. My thoughts are greater than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. And I want to teach you my ways. I want to give you my thoughts. My thoughts are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end, to bring your children to an expected end, to bring your husband to the expected end, your wife to the expected end, to you bring your parents to the expected end. My successful end. Our Father really does have good things in mind for people, for all people. But that's their choice. And we don't want to get in the way of their choice. We just want to be their intercessors. We want to pray for those who despitefully use us, for those that have that are, are throwing those rocks, who are, who are taking our clothes, or you know, whatever people have done to us, to hurt us, to maim us, to kill us, to drive us away. We want to be like Jesus. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because if they knew the goodness of the Lord, if they knew how much he loves them, they would never do it. If they saw him, they would fall, they would fall on their face before him, pleading for his forgiveness, desiring to have all of his love drenching them, pouring on them. They would desire his thoughts, and they would desire his ways. But because the God of this world has them blinded, they can't see it. Yet we're supposed to pray. But we're too caught up in our emotions about the things that are going on in our life, the things that are going on in the world, and we can't see the will of the Lord in this place. So i got to get on to Scripture right now. I'm going to go to... <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians. Thank you very much, Lord, for bringing me right to it. <clears throat> Verse 3. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. That's our mind, will, and emotions. That's our soul. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's what he does. He pulls down the strongholds. When we remember him, when we stop and we give this mind to him, let, let this mind, put, take your mind, lay it down, give it to him. He who is in us, the greater one, reminds us of all truth. This is that, what does it say in um, Isaiah chapter what, 55, I believe, 54, yeah, 54, that there's a, there's a, oh, what is it now? Let 
the Lord will lift up a standard. A word will come to you. A word will emerge out of your heart and it will come out of your mouth. And it destroys the works of the evil one. That intention that he had for you, it can't work. No weapon formed against you will prosper is what it says in the book of Isaiah chapter 54. It says, and, and this is for our security, just so that you would know, behold, I have created the smith that blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. I have created the spoiler to destroy. The devil's a created being. Where we cannot see him physically, he affects the body. He affects the mind. 